born here in Dayton, but I was fortunate enough to grow up in the East Cape community, which to me is just a very unique community in, in Southeast Texas. Uh, just the Czech heritage. There were also a few Polish families there. Uh, Miss Klimaszek's family was Polish. And a few German families settled there as well, including my family. So it was a very unique place. And of course, Eastgate today is a far cry from the Eastgate that I grew up in. And the Eastgate I grew up in was a far cry from the Eastgate my dad and his two sisters grew up in. Uh, my grandparents moved to Eastgate in 1940 from the Waco area. And uh, dad told a lot of stories about dirt roads, no drainage, and uh, uh, just, yeah, well, no drainage, yeah. And now we've got potholes in the road. And, uh, and Ms. Matowski would tell me when it rained, she stayed home. You didn't go anywhere. So, uh, I don't quite have the knack that my cousin Stephen Ladd had for seeing a lot of this together, but I did my best. Uh, I went to the Sam Houston State Library and uh, Sam Houston Research Center, as well as made a few trips to the courthouse. And this book of checks and others at Eastgate that my uncle Doug Smetsny and Mr. John Donachek put together about 25 years ago was a big help. I've had this book since 1993, but uh, I never really studied it until I got started getting this presentation together, so I learned a whole lot of stuff in here. Uh, the Eastgate community is known as the easternmost Czech settlement in Texas, located near the junction of Farm Roads 1960 and 686. Czech families had settled in western Liberty County as early as the 1890s in the areas of Stawson and Everson Dome, south of present-day Highway 90, but these early Czech settlers were not organized into a community. Before the Czech settlers began coming to this community in southwestern Liberty County, Anglo families such as the Olson, Benton, McGowan, Holbrook, and Shipman families, among others, had come to Eastgate and established farms. In the early days, these residents traded at Huffman, which at that time was called Dayton Front. I find it interesting that Dayton was originally called West Liberty and Huffman was originally called Dayton Front. <laughs> Some of these early settlers stayed, but others moved on due to heavy rainfall and poor drainage, which had, which had a devastating effect on the crops. Since cattle were allowed to roam and graze freely on the prairie, Fences were erected along the tracks of the Beaumont, Sour Lake, and Western Railway that crossed through this community. Gates were built to allow farmers with their wagons to cross over the tracks. This community was named for its location on the east gate of the railroad tracks, and this came from Miss Miriam Parlow's book, Liberty, Liberty County, and the Atascocita District. Uh, she named the railroad Beaumont, Sour Lake, and Western Railway, but then also saw the railway that goes through East Cape referred to as the Gulf Coast and Santa Fe Railway, so take it whichever way you want. Uh, the 1910 census shows Eastgate having a store and a population of 10 people. That was the old Eastgate town site. 1910. Okay, the town flat was drawn up by J.C. Perry in 1911, but it was not filed until two years later. In 1912, the Eastgate Post Office opened and operated until it closed in 1925. After the Eastgate Post Office was closed, mail was delivered by a rural route from Crosby and years later from Dayton. My father remembers that Mr. Cook, the postman, would come from Crosby in his truck with a trailer behind it and Wolf Island or Atascocita Road was shelled partway up to about where the McNair's house is today. And Mr. Cook would stop there, get his horse out of his trailer, and deliver the mail on horseback. So for a while, Eastgate had its own version of the Pony Express. <laughs> on September the 12th, 1926, J.E. Navratil purchased two and a half acres from the J.C. Perry Estate for $100. This is recorded in volume 139, page 309 of Liberty County Deed Records. Mr. Navratil built a cotton gin and residence in Eastgate near the railroad tracks about a quarter mile from the Eastgate cash store. The Navratil family operated the Eastgate cotton gin until they moved to Dayton and built the Navratil cotton gin. It's still right over there. You can't see it now because of the underpass, but it's there. Uh, J.C. Navratil sold the East, J.E. Navratil sold the Eastgate cotton gin and residence to Oscar Sabatik 
on May the 26, 1934, for $11,000. That was quite a profit. Buying it for $100, selling it for $11,000. Of course, he built the cotton gin and a house there, too. Uh, Adolph and Rosie Phillip moved to the residence, and Adolph Phillip operated the Eastgate Cotton Gin for his cousin, Oscar Zabakic. Later, Oscar Zabakic sold the Eastgate Cotton Gin to Alfred Badurka and Joseph Badurka on June the 18th, 1946, for $8,000. So he took a little bit of loss there. He must have been tired of the cotton business. He bought it for $11,000 and sold it for $8,000. The Badurka brothers and their father, Anton Badurka, operated the gin until it was closed in about 1957 or 58. That's what my dad told me. Eastgate also had a train depot at one time. And my father said that the depot agent would get a lantern and stand in the middle of the tracks to weigh the train down. Well, I'm sure he did that, but I'm sure as the train game came by closer, he'd get off the tracks. <laughs> the train's on stop on a dime. And my father said he took the train with my grandfather once to visit his grandparents in McLennan County. They took the train from Eastgate to Houston and then boarded another train headed north. My, grand my father's grandparents lived near the railroad tracks in the northeastern McLennan County in the Gerald community, and the train would stop and let my father and grandfather off near my great grandparents' farm, and they'd walk on into the house. So that's another bygone era that you don't hear about anymore. The Czech influence in Eastgate began through the efforts of Moravian-born businessman and land broker, Mr. Ignat Gallia, and I'm probably gonna butcher some of these names because I've never heard them before. Mr. Gallia had helped established Czech settlements and communities in other areas of Texas, such as Wharton, Fayette, Austin, and Brazos counties. Mr. Gallia began to buy lands in Eastgate that the railroad was selling, and in 1911, he began to advertise in Czech newspapers of the beautiful country in Liberty County at Eastgate. <laughs> Mr. Gallia also donated lands near the Eastgate town site for his cemetery, and today, Eastgate's two cemeteries are located here, the St. Anne's Catholic Cemetery, and the SPJSP Cemetery. Well, the SPJSP Cemetery is the one that doesn't have the fence around it. So you wonder if that's a different cemetery. Those people were not kicked out, okay? <laughs> different, different organization. Some of them were Catholics and some were Protestant. One couple who read Mr. Gallia's advertisements about land in this Western Liberty County community and who decided to invest in the Eastgate community was Adolph Jonacek and his wife Anna of Amundsville in Fayette County. Adolph Jonacek was born May 6, 1865 in House Number 40 in Klein Grado, Ostrova, Moravia, which at that time was part of the Habsburg Empire of Austria. Adolph was the son of Franz Jonacek and his second wife, Catherine Herna. At the age of 15 years, Adolph Jonacek immigrated to Texas. His ship left from the port of Bremen, Germany, and arrived at the port of New Orleans. From New Orleans, Adolf may have taken a second smaller ship to Galveston. Adolf had four older brothers, Anton, Frank, John, and Peter Jonacek, who had also immigrated to Texas. These Jonacek brothers settled in Fayette and Lavaca counties. Adolf Jonacek became a naturalized citizen of the United States on October the 16th, 1886 in LaGrange, Texas. On November the 19th, 1889, Adolf Jonacek married Anna Fisher in Fayette County. Anna Fisher Jonacek was born December the 8th, 1869 in Doni de Brody, Lanscron County in the East Bohemia in the Austrian Empire. Anna was the daughter of Peregrine Fisher and Philomena Vacek. Anna immigrated to Texas with her family in 1876. The Fisher family came on the steamship Hanover. <coughs> Their ship left from the port of Bremerhaven, Germany on April the 12th, 1876, and docked at the port of New Orleans on May the 10th, 1876. From there, the Fisher family went to Galveston on a coastal steamer where the family arrived on May the 13th, 1876. The Fisher family made their way to Fayette County where they lived with relatives before establishing their own home and farm. After their marriage in November 1889, Adolph and Anna Fisher Jonacek settled in the Amundsville community in Fayette County where they established a farm. They were the parents of eight children, seven of which lived to maturity. Adolf Jonacek purchased 181 acres on East, in Eastgate from Ignat Gallia on January the 8th, 1912 at a cost of 
$1,800. Mr. Johnicek made a down payment of $1,810 and agreed to pay out the balance of, uh, in three notes, totaling $4,123 with 60% interest. Before he could develop the property in Eastgate, Adolf Johnicek died in a flu epidemic at the age of 48 years on October 7, 1913, at his home in Amundsville. His widow, Anna Fisher Johnicek, carried out her husband's wishes in developing the Eastgate property by having a home built and other necessary buildings on the land. Mrs. Anna Johnicek herself never formally resided in Eastgate, as she maintained her home and residence at her farm in Fayette County. Several of Mrs. Johnicek's children resided at the home in which she had built in Eastgate and made significant contributions to, to the development of the Eastgate Czech community. The records in the Liberty County Courthouse show that on December the 1st, 1913, Anna Johnicek purchased an additional 10 acres of land on the Eastgate town site from Mr. Gallia, and she paid $225 in cash for this property. With the arrival of more Czech families in the Eastgate in the years 1912 and 1915, an important concern involving the spiritual life of the families arose. In response to a letter written by M.F. John and Czech and his wife Mary, Father Moser traveled to Eastgate from the Wichita Falls area and said the first mass in Eastgate at the John and Czech home on June 1, 1915, with six families being present. Father Moser made these trips from Baylor County to Eastgate four times a year to offer mass until the year 1918. Okay, with our modern transportation today, Wichita Falls is still a long ways off. So I can imagine making four trips a year from uh, Wichita, Wichita Falls area down here to Liberty County back in those days. Uh, of course, I know they did it by train, but still, the trains didn't travel as fast as they do now. In addition to Father Moser, several other priests would come to Eastgate in these years and offer Mass once a month. And Father Ignat, Ignat Valenta would come from Rosenberg and offer Mass on holidays and special occasions. For a brief time in 1915, nuns from the Sister of Divine Providence came to Eastgate and taught catechism. However, this proved to be too difficult because of distance and roads could not be traveled in wet weather, so Marcel Janicek and his older sister Stephanie took over the job of teaching catechisms at the Janicek home. In November 1917, a decision was made to build a church in Eastgate. Father Isidore Tresch wrote a letter to the Catholic Church Extension Society for aid in the endeavor of getting the church started. The society spent $500 to build a church with instructions that the new church would be named St. Anne in honor of Mrs. Anna Janicek. Beginning in April 1918, Marcel Janicek and Amo Hayaski began, to, began calling on parishioners to raise funds for the church's construction. By mid-October, they had pledges made totaling $900. Other Catholic parishes also sent donations. On January the 13th, 1919, Mrs. Anna Johnicek and her adult children, Stephanie, Marcel, Henry, and Peregrine, as heirs of Adolf Johnicek, <coughs> sold two and one-fourth acres of land to Reverend Christopher, the most Reverend Christopher E. Byrne, for $10 for building the church. The document stated that this land would be used only for the purpose of the church and not for a cemetery. With Eastgate resident Mr. Joe Krochka as head carpenter, construction began on St. Anne. The first St. Anne's Catholic Church was built at a cost of $1,665. Pews and other furnishings were donated by parishioners. The first St. Anne's Catholic Church was donated debt-free by the Bishop of Galveston, the Most Reverend C.E. Byrne on July 26, 1921. This is just my personal note here, my speculation, that Mrs. Donacek lived in Fayette County, but I would assume that for the dedication of this church, she did make the trip to Eastgate to attend this service since her family had contributed so much to, uh, to the construction of this church. But uh, again, there's no one alive today that could say if she was there or not. So uh, that's just speculation. The 1930 federal census shows Anna Janicek living in her home in Fayette County with her daughter Christine. Mrs. Janicek continued to reside at her home in Amundsville until her health began to fail. Mrs. Janicek was brought to her son Marcel Janicek's home in Eastgate, where she died on the morning of November 27, 1933. 
Mrs. Janacek is reached the age of 65 years. Her body was taken back to Fayette County, where she was buried beside her husband, Adolf, who had preceded her in death 20 years earlier. And they are buried in the Amundsville Catholic Cemetery, which is also known as St. John the Baptist Catholic Cemetery. And I like that title. How many times do you see the Baptist and Catholic <laughs> side by side? Right there, the same title. Uh, as the children of Adolf and Anna Janicek, their son Marcel, more commonly known as M.F. Janicek, played a leading role in Eastgate. If Eastgate would have had a mayor, Mr. Janicek would have been the man. The Liberty County deed records show that M.F. Janicek purchased 100 acres of land in Eastgate from Brilly and Veronica Supak for $2,200 on January 30, 1924. The deed records also show that Mr. Janicek purchased plots of land in, on the Eastgate town site from Theodore Nelson on May 25, 1926. M.F. Janicek owned and operated the Eastgate Cash Store, which was a mainstay for the Eastgate community. His date was seven miles away. The store served as a catalyst for the community. The store carried fuel, my dad remembers going there to get kerosene, clothes and material for making clothes, household items, feed, as well as groceries. The three Janicek children, Betty, Leroy, and Gladys, grew up working in their father's store. My father remembers many times riding his bicycle from his parents' farm to the Eastgate cash store to get things for his mother. And sometimes Aunt Lloyd would be sitting on the handlebars of the car, or the bicycle. <laughs> what, about two miles from Grandpa and Grandma's house to the Eastgate store? Janicek would buy extra eggs, extra butter, anything else that uh, the farmer had, had to offer. Uh, Mr. Janicek had a charge system that helped many people until harvest time. The accounts would be settled up months or sometimes years later. There were always those customers that moved away or died, and those accounts were never settled. Mr. Janicek felt that this was his way of giving back to the community of what he had been given to him in business. He was always there for assistance and whatever the need. Mr. Janicek was the mainstay for the area and, it, and we kept it together for all those years. Mr. Janicek was also the principal cotton buyer in Eastgate and he often hauled the cotton bales he purchased to the Houston market. On the route home from Houston, his truck would be loaded with, with uh, supplies for the Eastgate cash store inventory. In the early years, the benefit picnics I grew up calling them the Eastgate Bazaars, where, where St. Anne's Catholic Church were held at the Eastgate Cash Store, where a wooden platform served for dances. By 1948, it was decided that the parishioners of St. Anne's needed a larger church. On April the 12th, 1949, Marcel and Velasa Janicek sold two and one fourth acres of land to Bishop C. E. Byrne for $10, and the site of the new St. Anne's Catholic Church. This land is located some 200 yards south of the original St. Anne's Church and just southwest across the road from the home Anna Janicek had constructed in, the East, uh, in Eastgate. Marcel Janicek and his brother Henry Janicek were the designers of the new St. Anne's Catholic Church. With hard work and effort, the parishioners of St. Anne's raised the funds necessary to build the new church. Under the supervision of head carpenter Henry Janicek, the new St. Anne's Catholic Church was constructed at a cost of approximately $20,000. The new St. Anne's Catholic Church was dedicated by Bishop Byrne on Sunday, October 16, 1949. Two days later, the first wedding took place in the new church, and that was the wedding of Joe, Smithy, and Marveline Bodie. So my aunt and uncle, so that's my side of St. Anne's. <laughs> The original St. Anne's Catholic Church was converted into a parish hall and it served the St. Anne's community until the present day parish hall was built. The Eastgate Bazaars were moved from the Eastgate Cash Store to the St. Anne's Parish Hall and a new parish hall was later built and unfortunately the original St. Anne's Church was torn down about 1970 and uh, an old Eastgate landmark that was lost forever. I can remember playing in the old Eastgate Church uh, when we would go to the bazaars. Mr. Marcel Janicek operated the Eastgate Cash Store until his death at his home in Eastgate on June 26, 1962, at the age of 
59 years. His widow, Velasa Jonatchek, continued to run the UK cash store until she closed the store in 1958. Mrs. Jonatchek also wrote a history of St. Anne's Catholic Church and observant of the church's 50th anniversary celebration in 1971. Many Jonatchek descendants attended the church's 50th anniversary celebration, including the three surviving children of Adolf and Anna Fisher Jonatchek. And here I have a, beat, uh, beat, a brief biography of each of the children of the Jonatcheks, because many of them did play important roles in, in Eastgate in its early history. The oldest Jonatchek child is Stephanie Marie Jonatchek. She was born December 26, 1890 in Fayette County. And as a young single lady, Stephanie lived in her mother's house in Eastgate Town Site. And along with her brother, Marcel, she taught catechism. And Stephanie Jonacek later met Alvin Bonney, who was visiting from Maryland. Alvin Bonney was a native of Moravia. He immigrated to America in 1906, arriving at the port of Baltimore. <coughs> he became a naturalized U.S. citizen in Anne Arundel County, Maryland in 1915. Alvin Bonney made a trip to Texas to visit members of his mother's family, the Hayaski family, in Eastgate and in Fayette County, where he met Stephanie Jonachek. After their marriage, Alvin and Stephanie Bonney moved to Orland in Glen County, California, where they became successful farmers, as well as the parents of two sons, Norbert, Norbert and Arnold Bonney. Alvin and Stephanie traveled extensively during their marriage, and Stephanie wrote of their travels in, in the Czech semi-weekly newspaper, Navi Domo. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> After their retirement from farming, Alvin and Stephanie Bonney moved to San Luis Obispo, California, where Alvin Bonney died on November the 21st, 1952, at the age of 66 years. After being widowed, Stephanie continued her travels, traveling extensively in the United States, including Alaska, as well as to Europe. Stephanie also made a tour of Japan. She also made frequent trips to visit her family in Texas. Stephanie was present at the 50th anniversary celebration of St. Anne's Catholic Church in 1971. The oldest of the Jonachek children, Stephanie Jonachek Vaughn, outlived all her siblings. She died at the age of 96 years on March 6, 1987 in San Luis Obispo, California. She was buried in the Old Mission Cemetery beside her husband, in San Luis Obispo, and I can't pronounce that word either. Uh, I didn't take a Spanish lesson. Okay, the second child was Marcel Frank Jonachek. He was born January 16, 1893 in Almondsville, Fayette County, Texas. Marcel married his first wife, Mary Yonda, on November the 14th, 1914 in Fayette County. They moved to the Eastgate community soon after their marriage. Marcel and Mary Jonachek were the parents of one daughter, Betty Jonachek Nagersville, and she lived right over here in the brick house by the Methodist Church. Mary Yonda Jonachek died at the age of 26 years on April the 18th, 1919. She died in Eastgate, but her body was taken back to Fayette County and buried in the Holy Rosary Catholic Cemetery at Hoiston. After Mary's death, Marcel married Velasta Francis Boha. She was born in Snook in Bolson County, Texas, close to Caldwell. They were the parents of two children, Leroy Marcel Jonachek and Gladys Jonachek Forster. Marcel Jonachek died at his home in Eastgate on June 26, 1962, at the age of 69 years. His wife, Velasta, died in the Methodist Hospital in Houston on October the 19th, 1972, just a week before her 71st birthday. This is what gets me. They were so prominent in Eastgate, but... They're buried at the Sacred Heart Catholic Cemetery in Carlton. <laughs> I guess Dr. Summer is over there. <laughs> okay, the third child was Henry Adolph Jonachek. He was born July the 15th, 1896 in Amundsville, Texas. Henry Jonachek married Agnes Annie Plotka on January, January the 8th, 1923 in Fayette County. Henry and Annie Jonachek were the parents of three sons, Elmer Daniel Jonachek, Benjamin Frank Jonachek, and Wilfred Ike Jonachek and one daughter, Bernadette Jonachek Sabota. Henry and Annie lived the first years of their marriage in Fayette County, but by 1930, they had moved to the Eastgate community where they were Henry Farms and did carpentry work. Besides his work on the present St. Anne's Catholic Church, Henry built several homes in the Eastgate community. One of the homes he built was the home of 
height of Cho and Agnes Yarma in the North Woods area of Eastgate. The Yarma home was later moved to its present location on FM 1960, where it still stands today across from Satchery's uh, Pink Store and Veterinary Clinic. After living in Eastgate for several years, Henry and Annie Donachick moved to Rosenberg, Texas, and eventually they moved to Channelview, where their daughter Bernadette Savota resides. Mm -hmm. Henry Donachick was also in attendance at the, 19, at the 50th anniversary celebration of St. Anne's Catholic Church in 1971. Henry Donachick died in the Liberty Nursing Center in Liberty, Texas on April 29, 1984, at the age of 87 years. His wife, Annie Plotka Donachick, Seated Henry in death when, when she died in Baytown on August the 14th, 1980, at the age of 81 years. Henry and Annie Jonachek are buried in the St. Anne's Catholic Cemetery in Eastgate. And number four was Peregrine Bachluck, also known as Pete Jonachek. He was born May the 25th, 1898, in Amundsville, Texas. As a young single man, Peter Jonachek moved to Liberty County and lived in his, in his mother's house in Eastgate. Peter later returned to Fayette County where he met where he married Josephine Perenic. Pete and Josephine moved to Eastgate soon after their marriage where they farmed in the community. Their three children were all born in Eastgate, Johnny Jonachek, who compiled this book right here, Albert Jonachek, and Helen Jonachek Emil. In the 1940s, mid-1940s, Pete and Josephine Jonachek moved from Eastgate to, to Dabena in Fayette County where they settled and farmed. Pete Donachek died in a hospital in LaGrange, Texas on November the 8th, 1961, at the age of 63 years. His wife, Josephine Kralinik Donachek, died in a hospital in Yorktown, Texas on January the 5th, 1974, at the age of 78 years. And Peregrine and Josephine Donachek are buried in the St. Cyril and Methodius Catholic Cemetery in Dubina, Texas. Child number five, was Philomena Martha or Minnie Jonachek. She was born January 27, 1900 in Almondsville, Texas. Minnie Jonachek married Joseph Frank Perkle on November the 8th, 1920 in Fayette County. Joe and Minnie Perkle lived the first years of their marriage in Fayette County and that they were living in Eastgate by 1930. Joe and Minnie Jonachek Perkle were the parents of four children who lived to adulthood. They were also the parents of a set of twins who died at about a week old. Minnie Jonachek Perkle died at her home in Eastgate on April the 8th, 1943, at the age of 43 years. Minnie is buried near the grave of her twins in the St. Anne's Catholic Cemetery in Eastgate. Her husband, Joe Perkle, remarried in 1949, and he died in Houston on April the 3rd, 1976, at the age of 79 years. And he is buried in the Brookside Memorial Park in Houston. Child number six was Christine Donachek. She was born April the 8th, 1903 in Almondsville, Texas. Christine remained single all her life. The 1930 census shows Christine living with her mother in Almondsville, but Christine later moved to Houston where she eventually started her own food catering service. Christine never lived in Eastgate, but she was a supporter of St. Anne's Catholic Church with monetary and material contributions. For the dedication service of the present St. Anne's Catholic Church on October 16, 1949, Christine Jonachek donated several large flower arrangements. Two days later, Joe F. Smith Jr. married Marveline Bowden of St. Anne's, and Miss Jonachek let Uncle Joe and Aunt Marveline use the flower arrangements for their wedding. <laughs> Uncle Joe said that Aunt Marveline's family, who came from Central Texas to attend the wedding, thought Marveline was marrying a rich man because of all those beautiful flower arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> if you knew him, he was full of bull. <laughs> Miss Christine Jonachek died suddenly of a heart attack on March 12, 1970 in Houston. Her death certificate states she was dead on arrival at the Heights Hospital in Houston. Christine Jonachek was 66 years of age. Her body was taken to Fayette County and buried near her, the graves of her parents in the Almondsville Catholic Cemetery in Almondsville, Texas. And the youngest was Rudolph Jonachek. He was born April 17, 1909 in Almondsville. Rudolph married Georgia Mock on January the 10th, 1930 in Fayette County. Rudolph and Georgia Jonachek never lived in Eastgate and made visits to family members there 
and attended St. Anne's Catholic Church on special occasions. Rudolph Chonacek was in attendance for the 50th anniversary celebration at St. Anne's in 1971. Rudolph and Georgia lived the first several years of their marriage in Fayette County. In 1943, I tracked him down, they were living in Flatonia, which is the western edge of Fayette County. And in 1962, they were living in Fort Lavaca in Calhoun County. Rudolph and Georgia were the parents of one son and two daughters. And a few years before his death, Rudolph and Georgia moved to <coughs> Rosenberg, Texas, and Fort Bend County. Rudolph Shonachek died at his home in Rosenberg on March 25, 1980, at the age of 70 years. His wife, Georgia, died in Angleton, Texas, on June 20, 1988, at the age of 76 years. So Rudolph and Georgia Shonachek are buried in the West Gethsemane Cemetery in Rosenberg. And man, I just wanted to say, you know, growing up in Eastgate, you know, our, the Eastgate stores is one of those things that I thought would always be there. Even though I can barely remember being there as a little boy, uh, you know, the building was there. That was the old Zonacek house there by the Eastgate Parish Hall and the old uh, original St. Anne's Church and the old SPJST building, which stood on Hamill Road and, and County Road 605. And, uh, you know, those landmarks, they were part of life, you know, and to me, I grew up seeing them all the time, and now they're gone, it's like, that's history that we can't get back anymore, and uh, you never miss something until it's not there anymore, but uh, that's, uh, that's, that's how I feel about it. Anyway, y'all can wake up now. Uh, Buddy John Chick, which one of those? Johnny, Buddy John Chick's father was Leroy John Chick, and he was the grandson of Marcel and Velasquez John Chick, who had the Eastgate store. So, Buddy owns a lot of the old John Chick lands that he has his grass farm on. Okay.